Welcome to another segment of Community Lens. I am Erica Jones, your host from Somerville Media Center, and we are joined in the studio today with Scout Magazine editor Lily Millman. Welcome. Thank you. Happy, Happy to, to be here. here. Happy to have yeah. you here. <laughs> um, so today we're going to chat with Lily uh, about all things related to the latest edition of Scout uh, Somerville, which is Somerville Then and Now, which is a really exciting uh, theme, and we're going to learn a little bit more about that. But first and foremost, we want to get to know Lily. So, Lily, welcome again. Um, so, you're the new editor of, of Scout mm -hmm. Magazine, correct? Yes. Cool. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's really exciting. Um, for those who don't know, because Somerville is a very tight-knit community. We love to know our neighbors and, yeah. and what's their story. So, um, and us being a storytelling organization, what is your story? What what um, what brought you to Scout Magazine, and, and what's that journey? So, um, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm a huge uh, local news fan in general, so this is really exciting for me. Um, but I grew up in Long Island, New York. Um, I always wanted to go to college in like Massachusetts, um, preferably Boston. I just liked it. Um, yeah. And I went to Emerson. There's plenty of options in Boston. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I went to Emerson College uh, for the writing literature publishing major. And I wasn't sure that I wanted to do journalism until I started doing a lot of research there as part of like the honors thesis program. And so then I started getting into more journalistic, nonfiction writing, um, fully like pivoted away from fiction writing. And I got an internship at Scout my senior year of college, um, which was super exciting for me because I'd only done like um, arts and entertainment writing beforehand. Mm -hmm. So it was the first place that let me write about news. Um, Rena, the former editor, just gave me a shot. Um, That's great. Yeah, it was really cool. And then I continued freelancing for them for a while. And then I actually moved to Skagway, Alaska um, to work at a local Whoa. newspaper there. It was a quick little trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Several hours and miles away. <laughs> yeah, three plane rides, 24 oh, hours of traveling. Um, so what was going on there? They had a local newspaper there that I um, kind of found on a whim, similar to Scout. I was just looking up local um, sources of wow. news. Where in Alaska was it? Southeast, okay. so um, only accessible by ferry or tiny plane. Um, you have to first fly to Seattle and then Juneau, and then from Juneau on like a five-person <laughs> plane to wow. Skagway. Um, so I imagine that was a really unique experience. Yeah. That was incredible and it kind of solidified that like this is what I want to do long term. I want to write somewhere where I can see the people reacting to what I'm doing mm -hmm. just like by going outside. There are only a couple hundred people live year round. So anything wow. I wrote, if they had a problem Everybody with it, knew about yeah, everything. they're fine letting me know just like at the grocery store. That's um, so fun. But it's a little similar to Scout. I actually live in Brighton now, um, so I'm not like in Somerville, but I see a lot of the same people yeah. regularly. Um, and so when Rena, the former editor, was leaving, she sent me an email about it over the summer. And I was like, no matter what I do, I have to somehow find my way back. Right. Um, because it's so hard finding a local media outlet right. that like is going to pay you to write for them and is going to be a high quality product that yeah. people actually read and respect. Um, it's a really unique opportunity no, it's totally, that I'm so I mean, grateful for. That's really um, <clears throat> an important point that you bring up in that obviously, you know, we're a 40-year-old local media institution here in Somerville and we have many various sector partnerships with, mm -hmm. you know, nonprofits and local businesses and city agencies, but our partnerships with the local media has also been really really critical for, for both entities to feel like mutually supported um, around, you know, just like collaborative journalism, uh, just helping to raise awareness yeah. about issues through multimedia partnerships. So we've been working with Scout for, you know, several years now. I mean, essentially since it, 
since it really launched, like we've been like just mm -hmm. figuring out ways to, to support one another through different like video series or um, segments and such. So it's really great to have you here and to talk about, <laughs> you know, you. What, what interests you. And we're happy that you're part of the local journalism scene. Um, so the, the latest theme um, is then and now. Right, and obviously, Scott Magazines is, has two presences in the Cambridge and the Somerville sector. We're we're mostly focusing on as much Somerville yes. uh, conversation today. But what can you tell us about, you know, how that theme, to your knowledge, like came about? So it fits nicely with the turn of the decade. Um, people are thinking about what's happened, what's going to change. Especially in Somerville, things are very rapidly changing, which is something that I keep hearing about again and again um, as I've like started going out in the community and reporting. Right. Um, people are always talking about how things are changing and how it kind of freaks them out. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of varying opinions and, and yeah, who exactly. you're asking and who it's impacting. Exactly, yeah. um, and we're kind of trying to cater to as many voices as we can. Um, right. We don't want to just write for the generational Somervillians and only write their point of view, right. but we also don't want to like forsake them um, in honor of like the transplants. So right. it's a healthy balance to yeah. navigate, right? And then and now kind of ties a lot of that together, um, and it fits nicely that uh, as of this year, Scout Somerville's been around for like 11 years, so cool. it's like nice to look back to like 2009 when we started um, at the end of. Uh, 2019 right. so I think with the that's the exciting I didn't, I didn't realize yeah. that's been around for that long yeah I actually yeah. wasn't I didn't know that much about the history either until we dove yeah. into it this well, it's issue. such a unique magazine that it really is one of the it's the only glossy magazine mm -hmm. right that has really cool punchy <laughs> features and obviously each editor brings like their energy and you know pr like kind of like perspectives to the to the magazines and um, so yeah, so so the the theme is really is really um, just timely, as you're mm -hmm. saying, which is great. Um, what were some moments of surprise for you while putting this edition together? I think I was pleasantly surprised just by how much this community loves its history mm -hmm. and different kinds of history. Yeah, like we have the actual like start of the United States history with our story about True. the first flag raising reenactment. And the um, Prospect Hill Tower, yeah. right, right. And that came about after a conversation with Brandon Wilson, the executive director of the Somerville Historical Commission. The resident historian. Yeah, yeah she yeah. told me about that and she told me to reach out to <laughs> Lawrence Wilworth, a third generation Somervillian um, who just takes it almost fully upon himself to make this reenactment happen. Um, I didn't know that, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I met him at the Mount Vernon restaurant. Wonderful. Another staple. Yeah, and he, <laughs> I found out he loves that place. Like when he walked in, they're like, Larry, sit, sit at whatever table you want. Um, <laughs> like the norm of cheers. Like, yeah. Hey, Larry. <laughs> yeah, um, and he said he like even organizes a brunch at the end of every reenactment, just to, like engage. Um, the community building. The community, yeah. um, which was a really pleasant surprise. Um, especially when you're talking about so many things changing. Uh, another similar uh, article is like, it was called The Maker's Mark. It's about mm -hmm. adaptive reuse and architecture in the um, Summer Nova complex. Oh yeah, a lot going on over there. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised that in this face of like a lot of mass development and stuff, all of those uh, companies decided to keep the original architecture of their buildings right. and make use of what they have instead of changing it. Yeah. Um, that's so that good. was just a nice blend. Thoughtfulness is going into yeah. some of the development that's that's happening, which is totally totally true. Um, I'm sure there's many more moments that have have happened, but in terms of kind of shifting, what were some of the you know historical stories of Somerville that um, you mentioned, like Larry? But are there any other um, you know conversations that resonated with you during this uh, putting together mm -hmm. the edition? So definitely, um, as far as like United States history goes, that's like the article that tackles that. Um, but we also have an article in there about liquor licenses in Somerville, mm -hmm. which I found interesting um, because I didn't know much about like the history of the Somerville Chamber of Commerce and the restaurant yeah. scene. Um, and when I think of like Davis Square, like Union Square, I think of all the great restaurants that are there. Um, and the competition. Yeah. Around liquor licenses as well. And a lot of them wouldn't 
be around in the same way had the Chamber of Commerce not fought to get like mm -hmm. boutique liquor licenses, which is just interesting. interesting. Um, how that was something that people like forced to come about to make Somerville a restaurant capital. Right. Which I didn't know. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Fun facts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously throughout this whole like aggregation of the magazine, um, I'm sure you're just feeling like more connected to, yeah. to the community, right? Like through this process. Um, in terms of other stuff on the horizon, obviously we want to encourage folks to, to grab these yeah. throughout Somerville and the different um, pickup spots. And I know that's on the website, right? Yes. In terms of like where you can find them. Yeah. Um, what's on the horizon for Scout? Um, so like you said, every editor like brings their own uh, flair. Um, yeah. Something that I really want to continue doing is well, Scout already has a new story in every single issue, but I think where these issues succeeded is that we went really, really hard <laughs> with our news stories, um, and we didn't try to shy away from more serious topics, um, which I think is important since a lot of people have told me since I started that Scout is just like the fun magazine. So I'm excited to like a little more push the um, serious news story it's good. that so we've been doing. diving deeper into some of the issues. Yeah, um, which we do have a history of doing. I just want to make good on that promise, yeah. I guess. Um, and and we, I can speak to that. I, I have, um, you know, worked with uh, the former Emily's <laughs> who were the yeah. editors before. And um, I think it's always, like you said, it depends on, you know, who's, who's the editor at the time. And um, I think that's really uh, encouraging to know that you know you're going to continue the 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 due diligence of, mm -hmm. of being a news magazine. Obviously, it's important to have light pieces yeah. and kind of some fluff. Of course, stories. and I love those. I love that about and Scout. We we live in an interesting time yeah. where it's nice to sort of retreat and and to escape a little bit. But there is something to be said about even multi issues that are that are discussing like ongoing topics that might not just be you know, shared in one page or two pages, right? Exactly. Scout is very unique in that it gives younger writers the space to write like a 3,000 word, four page feature investigating something that's happening in a summer village is like 4.2 square miles. Like you right. wouldn't think that that would be around. And I want to make the most of that opportunity cool. um, while I'm here. Cool. Um, are there, is there a, a, a pitch you want to put out there for folks if they want to like collaborate with you or potentially be a writer for a scout? Yeah, we're always accepting freelance writers. Um, there's my email is on our website in the um, about us section. I encourage anyone to reach out to me at any time. Since I started, we've already found a bunch of new great writers who have just cold emailed me. Cool, I love it. Yeah, there's, as I know that you, you come to some of the um, like local journalism meetings and you can tell there's a lot of freelance <laughs> writers and yeah. out there. So that's really good to have additional outlets through, yeah. through the magazine. Um, anything else you want to plug, um, f social, other ways that, you know, the website and all that stuff? Yeah, um, so I would encourage everyone, if you haven't, to check out our website. Um, and I would also encourage you to check out our Patreon, which we recently updated. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, so we're going to be giving away a lot of, like, fun, um, like, mugs, merchandise, um, invites to invite-only events that we're planning throughout the year. Um, so I would recommend supporting us on Patreon to keep local media Support afloat local journalism. for another year. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically it. Um, awesome. And follow us on Instagram at Scout Mags. Very awesome. It was so good to have you in the studio. And Thanks to, so much. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll, have, you, we'll have you back. Yeah, I look keep, forward to keep, it. You know, yeah. We'll keep talking about. So this is the January and February edition, and there's a place online that people can find out where they can access these magazines. Yes. Um, and then, yeah, and then, like Lily said, if you want to be in touch with her, you can contact her. And on that note, thank you, Lily. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.